Good morning. Sunday morning. Not going to do very much here today. I'm going to go out and work in the shop, but um, and I wasn't going to post anything at all today. I wasn't going to do any of this, you know, because it's there's only so much of this that I want to do, and there's only so much of it you want to listen to. But uh, as I'm going through this morning, I found a what I think may be a good buy type of thing. It's a fresh listing, and it's a Atlas Horizontal Milling Machine. And it's listed here for 950 out of California. Um, machine's complete, it looks like. Um, not in great condition, but for 950 in this day and age and what people are parting these out machines for, or parting these machines out for, I think this may be a pretty good buy. And I just, I made some observations on it, so I thought I'd share, um, go back and look at it. And um, this is just some of the stuff that I look at when I'm looking at machines. And the listing reads, Atlas Horizontal Milling Machine, Model MF, fully functions, all the parts used, but good condition, sell, sell it as it's shown. So, honest listing, this is a fairly new seller. I mean, he's, or eBayer, you know, I don't know for how long. He doesn't have a real big, lot of feedback in, in the world of lots of feedbacks, but um, this looked to be a pretty good buy. Uh, it's a good candidate for a rebuild is what it is, but if we look at the pictures and I'll just go through and describe them, you can go back and look because like I say, I think this is a good buy. First picture shows that the uh, looks to be complete, got an arbor with it, got an arbor driver. There's a few cutters here, although some of these cutters look like they are too big to fit on the machine as it uh, using the overarm support and everything. Now there's ways you can utilize these bigger cutters, but you're not gonna get the support of a horizontal milling machine. But anyway, there is a uh, couple of interesting observations. Now I think somebody started working on this machine a little bit probably, and either it wasn't in as good a condition as they thought it was and they wanted to mess with it. Um, maybe didn't know a whole lot about it, but part of this machine's been disassembled and then it looks like it's been put back together maybe. Um, showing some rust on the table, paints flaky, you know, showing a little bit of rust underneath there. Otherwise it looks to be complete. You can't really see the feed box, so you can see a little bit of it in some of the pictures so it's there now what condition it's in that i don't know that's what i say i think this machine may be good for a rebuild first picture um you know just a good overall picture of it uh, labeling's faded on it and that type of thing uh, there's several views and several different pictures gives you a few little clues to it second one's a little bit different angle not a whole lot different the Handles are, are there, there's some pitting on them and everything. They're not in great, great condition, but there again for what they're asking for this machine as compared to what they're trying to get out of these when they're parting them out. I think this may be a pretty good value for somebody. Guards are all there. A uh, little bit later model guards. This is a later model casting. It's got the door on the back of the base casting or the cover on the back of the base casting so it's compatible with coolant. The very early machines didn't have that. Um, the paint and everything matches. I think everything's pretty much original to this machine. It's got a drawbar in it. Like I say, there's an arbor and there's an arbor driver there. Um, got an Irwin vise on it, which is no great shakes, but that's what it is. Now this has got the later model um, Arbor Support end cap, so it accepts a accepts the Arbor Support, and this is one of the later models, I believe, that's got a split cotter in it. It doesn't have the doesn't have the slot down the middle of the of the Arbor Support bracket. You know, rust on a little bit of everything. Doesn't look like really, really bad rust, but there's some there's some pitting on it. Um, somebody's done something with a motor. It's got a, it's not an original motor type of thing. The pulley on the counter shaft has been changed. It's got a big spoked alloy pulley on it. Um, some corrosion down in the pulleys, that type of thing. There again, nothing that if you're going to strip a machine down and redo it is, is an issue. The lock on the side of the knee is there. You know, a lot of times those are missing. A lot of Gitz oilers on it. It looks like they're, 
you know, where they should be. The handle to shift it into bag gear is broken and is, something's kind of cobbled up on there. Um, but that's not uncommon either on a lot of these machines that got, got broken off. Everything else looks relatively complete. Um, wiring's kind of a hodgepodge into that motor, but that's, you know, you expect that too. Um, the cutter that is mounted on the arbor is mounted backwards, but that's either someone not knowing or not caring or who knows what the case may be there. But anyway, just found it a little bit interesting. Thought you might like to see that. Um, not going to spend much time here. That's the only thing I really saw on on the mill. That slotting attachment still here, and there's or has been relisted again. They're evidently listing this stuff, and when it goes off, they're immediately relisting it. It's you know we've talked about it before. Three thousand dollars is too much for it, and a motor base assembly for. 150 it's been listed four or five times that's too much uh, one of the other things I did find here there's a shaper mill dividing head drive dog and gears now this is just the head for the indexing attachment for the atlas lay they want 700 bucks and this is a seller that's been here you know should know better they're parting out machines and everything there's no tail stock with this and um, even though the headstock is complete there's looks like there's two gears with it probably why um, it, it's no great shakes. Now, actually, that's what I'm working on today, I think, is I'm just going to spend the day working on my set of index centers for the, for the mill. The reality is, and, and I, have a, I have a headstock end, factory headstock, uh, which is what I made my patterns off of and everything. I, um, I got it. it. This one's in a little bit better condition than mine, just from the aspect of it looks like the the knob and the index knob are in a little bit better condition than mine was. I got a couple of gears with mine. I got the drive dogs with it and everything. And I think when I bought it here two or three years ago, I bought it because it was a, I felt a good deal at about $125, I think is probably what I paid for it. $700 is way too much for these. Um, and the reality is we want, and I've talked about it before, we want factory parts back on our Atlas machine. We want the factory accessories and things. The reality is this index head is not a real great attachment. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do and everything, but if you are seriously going to use these for anything other than basically simple indexing, why you're much better off going to a dividing head or a better indexing head. What's being done with this setup can almost basically be done just with a spin index head mounted to your table, which is they're dirt cheap by comparison to this. This is not a really, really great attachment. You know, they can be modified to do stuff, but um, I wouldn't, it, when, the, when they start getting out of line with these, these attachments like this, the shaper index head, that type of thing, they've, they've blown the prices way out of proportion. And even though they are somewhat desirable and it's nice to have those on our machines, these are not a great solution for that. This was a relatively inexpensive, simple attachment that was originally produced for these machines. So take it for what it's worth, but they're, you know, if I was buying a complete attachment, same way with vices on the shaper and the mill, um, they're not, they're not all they're cracked up to be. They're not the, the designs are not the greatest, I guess. The, the implementation is okay, but the designs aren't great. That's all I see on mills. Um, I did see, and I'm not gonna spend time here at all on this stuff. There is a 7B Shaper model, or a 7B Shaper listed, um, rough condition, pre-owned, $700, buy it now, free local pickup. This may potentially be a good candidate for a restoration if you've got access to some parts, but it's missing a lot of stuff. There's no guards with it. There's no oil tray on it. Um, it it's got some good stuff to it, but it is definitely in rough condition. So is it a candidate for a restoration? Yeah, probably, but you're going to have to search for parts. Um, after that, I see there's a, a Atlas Shaper vice listed. 400 bucks and 1550 shipping. 
These vices seem to go for about $400. There again, not a great design. There's newer designs out there for that same $400 that are a far superior vice. You can get a, get a decent lockdown vice. Um, it's got some shielding. The problem with these is they catch all the crap down in the lead screw. You know, it falls right on through. It's just not a really well-designed vice, even though everybody wants one. Um, this vice has been abused a little bit. You know, it's a good functional vice. Two of the slots, opposing slots on the uh, for the hold downs, it's got four hold down bolts. Two of those have been notched on out. So probably to utilize it on a different machine. It's a tight fit when you put them on a shaper table, but they do fit on the shaper table. So I would imagine these were slotted out so that it can be used on a milling machine table or somebody else's brand milling machine. Um, doesn't affect function, but not a real great thing. This one's got quite a few holes drilled in the table. The, the jaws are chewed up a little bit, which isn't a big deal. You can replace those easy enough. This one has been drilled on down into the lead screw, and it says that in the description. Um, it's, you know, it's a functional vice. Would I give $400 for it? No, I wouldn't. So I think those are my only rants for the day. I'm going to spend the day working, I believe, on the, on the, um, my set of index heads. I've had other stuff that I've had to do around the house. Um, so that's going to be the day for the day or the projects for the day. A few things listed on the, on the, uh, under Atlas stuff, nothing real earth shattering this morning. Um, call it drawbar set, $300 or best offer and $25 shipping. Um, it's got 15 collets with it, vintage USA, 300 bucks. I, I wouldn't do that, but anyway, there's some vertical counter shaft parts. Um, used half nuts, lathe bronze nut with lead screw half nuts set, three pieces, 50 bucks and 10 bucks shipping. They're used pieces of shit. Anyway, 10, 12 inch lathe gives for compound and lower swivel. 299 is where it's starting out, 445 shipping. Now. You can get them for under 10 bucks. That's probably an okay buy. You can smooth them up a little bit. They're gonna be perfectly usable. But when these guys want 20 and 30 bucks for them, why that's, that's foolish. Foolish, foolish. 10 inch lathe horizontal counter shaft assembly. This is, is the first, it's a new listing. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Main reason was this little, um, that little milling machine. I think that may be a decent buy if somebody's in the in that area and is looking for one. So anyway, hopefully you find it a little bit interesting. Use it for your research when you're looking for parts. Uh, comment suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And enjoy your day. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch.